upon the shores of Lake Taupo within New Zealand is an intriguing as yet unexplained artifact that has become known as the Kaimanawa Wall. What is interesting regarding the Kaimanawa Wall is the fact that it clearly predates academia's rigidly attested view of the past inhabitations of the country. New Zealand is largely accepted to have first been inhabited within the last 800 years. However, the analysis that has been done on this mysterious wall has shown that it is, at very minimum, 2,000 years old. Additionally, it clearly displays the telltale construction qualities of a lost knowledge, evidently within countless other ruins found all over the world. The controversial wall first came to public attention during the early 1990s, with a publication by Barry Brailfords in the New Zealand Listener called Megalith Mystery Are Giant Stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park, Evidence of an Ancient New Zealand Culture? Within, he details how analysis has shown that the stone wall is at least two millennia old and was created by previous unknown settlers within New Zealand. He called them the Waitaha and postulated that they were subsequently exterminated by the Maoris who arrived only 800 years ago. Furthermore, Brailsford maintains that the wall could link New Zealand with Egypt, South America, and many other ancient civilizations, continuing to list 12 pieces of evidence to support his claims. Predictably, however, individuals within many different fields of academia have leapt to the defense of currently upheld paradigms. The Department of Conservation, archaeologists, geologists, and just about every political party in New Zealand including a number of media outlets, directed tremendous hostility toward the claims, leading to the site being completely shut off to the public. You have to wonder, what are they so scared of people finding? Regardless of Brailford's evidence, a conclusion that the wall is nothing but a mere natural formation has been publicly peddled ever since the publication nearly 30 years ago. A conclusion in staunch denial of reality or evidence. The conclusion made by official geologists was that the wall is an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claimed that the block shapes were produced by fractures in the rock, attributed to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural events. It seems scholars are quite happy to date such sites, but extremely reluctant to attribute any intelligent design within their creation. Could the Kaimanawa Wall really be a 330,000-year-old man-made wall? A wall built by the same people as many other sites found across the world? We find such possibilities highly compelling. If one were to mention the incredible feats of engineering undertaken by our now lost ancient ancestors, in particular, gigantic walls, some may lean towards the impressive, sheer enormity of the megalithic stones within the wall of Gornaya Shoria, or more commonly, the Great Wall of China is the more popular choice, or the more obscure, lesser-known Great Wall of India. Undoubtedly, the Great Wall of China was a feat of monstrous proportions, having been built to such a scale it's visible from space, yet what many more are unaware of is an ancient kingdom once located in southwestern Nigeria. Known as the Walls of Benin, they dwarf the Walls of China, a series of defensively constructed earthworks called Aya in Edo. They consist of 9.3 miles of intercity walls and an estimated 9,900 miles of outer wall. The Walls of Benin City were described as, quote, the world's largest earthwork carried out prior to the mechanical era, end quote, by the Guinness Book of Records. The Benin city walls have been known of by Westerners since around the 1500s. Portuguese explorer Duarte Pacheco Pereira briefly described the walls during his travels. Another description was given around 1600 by the Dutch explorer Dirk Reiters. Reiters' account of the walls is as follows, quote, at the gate where I entered on horseback, I saw very high, very thick walls of earth with a very deep, broad ditch around. They were dry and full of high trees. Who built these walls? Or indeed, how did they accomplish such a mind-boggling feat? 
Traditional accounts suggested that assuming a 10-hour workday, with a labor force of some 5,000 men, it could have been completed within just 97 days. However, these estimates have been criticized over the years in many ways, one in particular being a lack of account for the time it would have taken to extract Earth from ever-deepening holes. Yet, regardless of these discrepancies in opinion, regarding the challenge in its creation, or indeed their age or origin, we find these walls highly compelling. Nix was at one time the official meeting place of the Athenian Democratic Assembly of Ancient Greece. In the earliest days of Athenian democracy, the ecclesia met in the agora. However, sometime within the early 5th century, the meeting place was moved to a new meeting place, which came to be called Nix, from the Greek word meaning tightly packed together. This word, we feel, was more than likely inspired by the astonishing polygonal masonry, so often conveniently absent any of academia explanations as to the origins of such sites. How can individuals tasked with establishing an accurate understanding as to the origins of such sites seemingly overlook that which cannot be explained? It is clear to us that a conspiracy has befallen the academically established historical timeline of our species. This in favor of a perceived all-knowing rather than that which they truly are, rather out of their depth. The Nyx Wall being one of the most compelling and enigmatic features of the ancient ruin. Polygonal masonry of extraordinary size, with a construction method indicative of a lost technology and thus lost civilization. Excavations at the site began in 1910 by the Greek Archaeological Society, which definitely confirmed the site as the Nyx. Interestingly, on the western end of the site is an ancient astronomical observatory. However, during the Greeks' inhabitancy, the site was the focus of political discussion, not astronomy. These discussions were held every nine days and required the involvement of no less than 6,000 residents of Athens, although it is thought that the site could actually hold more than 20,000 individuals. Who built Nix? or indeed the inexplicable polygonal masonry present in its boundary walls, with blocks similar in size to that of the fortress of Sacsayhuaman. The question is, why has this site seemingly been overlooked, not only by academia, but missed by the majority of alternative research? This absence of research, we feel, is clear proof of academia's efficiency to stifle free thought. We suspect that their motives focus on protecting investments, to retain book sales in regards to their apparent accurate explanations of the Greeks and Romans. This requires the concealment of anything which contradicts this tale of events, concealing features which would inevitably ignite unanswerable questions within the viewer's mind. It is undoubtedly an astonishing wall, surrounding an equally astonishing ruin, a place we find highly compelling. Over a hundred years ago, a curious discovery was made in a town now named after this upart, Rockwell within Texas. An ancient wall was unearthed, and although it was clearly of an artificial nature, its possible age predictably made a number of people in the academic world deny its artificial origins in favor of a far less likely scenario involving natural formation. Although magnetic exploration suggested that the rock wall had been where it lay for over 100,000 years, its origins have been heavily debated ever since its initial discovery. In 1852, farmers in Texas were digging a well when they discovered the wall. Conservative estimates have placed its creation some 100,000 years ago. Yet now, many believe it to actually be an antediluvian relic left by a now-lost civilization some 200 to 400,000 years ago. Dr. John Geisman of the University of Texas, Dallas, tested the rocks as part of a History Channel documentary, giving credence to the denial of its artificial origins, suggesting they formed where they were, claiming that they were all magnetized in the same way. This tremendous age has led many to believe in modern paradigm, 
to deny a man-made origin, as this does to cooperate with the Bering Strait theory and currently upheld timelines in regards to evolution. However, there are others in similar fields who have found curious characteristics of the wall which do indeed suggest artificial origins. Geologists James Shelton, for example, and Harvard's architect John Lindsay have focused on its unique design features, including architectural elements, archways, lintel portals, and square doorway and window openings, which all suggest not only artificial creation, but functionality for humans, which nature would simply not create. The depth or past height of the wall is also an impressive legacy. The family of T.U. Wade, who moved to the area and initially made the discovery, dug to a depth of 40 feet to try and find the bottom of the wall. This excavation, however, was abandoned without finding the bottom. Years later, in 1949, Mr. Sanders of Fort Worth took up the baton and continued excavational exploration of the wall finding a number of megalithic stones at considerable depth and weighing several tons. After bringing them to the surface, mysterious pictographs were found upon them, further supporting the thesis of artificial origin. In addition, curious metal rings of modern composition were found embedded in rocks, suggesting the presence of lost technology. It would appear that the wall is indeed an antediluvian relic, one possibly submerged and subsequently buried in ancient sediment during the Great Flood. Modern studies have found that the wall is in fact six stories tall and 20 miles in length, with a number of individuals now attributing the wall to a lost civilization of giants due to its inexplicable nature. Quote, it is good when examples like rock wall appear that test our abilities and cause us to question basic Newtonian mechanistic assumptions that have not been modified for over 150 years. Physics had to abandon this approach at the turn of the century, opting instead for relativity and quantum mechanics in order to further their understanding of matter and the universe," said James Shelton, geologist from New Orleans. It is a relic which we find highly compelling. We have, in the past, investigated the still unexplained, now lost, stonewalling technique, now commonly referred to as polygonal masonry. We have described the incredible feat that this technique involved, the mystery of how an ancient civilization once cut and perfectly fitted together these enormous jigsaw puzzles sometimes comprised of megalithic blocks weighing many tons in weight. However, we have also covered the coalescence of this polygonal technique with another, which has become known as Cyclopean within Italy, with the Cyclopean walls built upon those by those who possess the ability to create polygonal masonry, all but proving that this Cyclopean technique predated that of seemingly more competent polygonal technique. But just how old these techniques are, or indeed the age of these structures themselves, is now lost to history. However, our next area of interest may shed some light on these site's considerable age, if you consider the evidence that the site itself presents. Known as the Pelasgic Wall, it is located upon a gigantic, once leveled natural rock within the Acropolis of Athens. The wall, during the time of Thucydides, was claimed to have stood several meters high and six meters broad. It surrounded the entirety of the ruin, with a large visible fragment of the original wall, demonstrating this claimed scale still standing and located upon the southern side, close to the original entrance. Yet today, the beveling can be seen, but the wall has all but vanished, with the foundation of the wall laying below several feet of natural sediment buildup indicative of a tremendous age. Said to have been built by the Pelagians, hence the name given to the wall. Not only does the sediment present at the site suggest a far more tremendous age, but the sheer size of the structure, along with the rock it now sits upon that was entirely leveled at some point within ancient antiquity, all points to an ancient feat far beyond the capability of known ancient Grecians. 
and just like that of polygonal masonry, predictably can be seen at sites just like that of polygonal, which are often surrounded by controversy when it comes to the claim construction and origin of said sites. We logically conclude that these attributions to different groups within known history, easily identified in other locations where these groups never ventured, is solid proof that those who state such false truths know they are indeed being deceptive. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling.